Hey guys, it's um, about 8 o'clock at night on uh, Wednesday. Yesterday, I went to another orthopedic surgeon for basically a tiebreaker on my shoulder. Um, at the end of February, I dislocated my right shoulder for the fourth time in my life. And the first three times, the way in the action that dislocated it, I was still up on my feet and I'm like screaming and, and moving it and I managed to get it to pop back in. It was incredibly painful, but once it gets popped back in, the pain greatly subsides. It wasn't until after the third dislocation, doing practically nothing, that I'm like, hmm, because the second and third one were relatively close together and I thought, you know, when I first dislocated it, when I was like 23, I just thought it would heal and that would be the end of it. And then here I am in my 30s, 40s, and it was dislocating again, not even really doing anything. And after that, it really was hurting. It was bothering me. And so I chose to go to an orthopedic surgeon he said, well, since this is your third time, I would recommend surgery because that will fix it and it won't happen again. And I said, well, you know, I know it's a big surgery. My kids are really little at that point and I just didn't have the support system. And so he said, well, you can do physical therapy. So I did because I was trying to avoid surgery, did physical therapy. It did not make my arm any more stable. Um... For the 10 years since it last dislocated, um, the only reason why it hasn't is because there are certain movements that I can't do with that arm, and it's my right arm. I could type, I could use it, I could, you know, carry my purse and different things, but like lifting it up over my head or lifting it like straight out from my body or like pushing myself up with it there or like lifting the arm up and out, I I. I just avoid doing those things because I could feel that it was going to pop out. And there's sometimes it's just hanging down beside my body and it just feels like it's going to fall out. And I think it's just because it's loose. Maybe it was shifting or something. I don't know. But after I tripped and fell and it dislocated and I was on the floor and I couldn't get up, we had to call an ambulance. They had to give me fentanyl IV in my bedroom before they could even attempt to get me off the floor. I mean, it was just excruciating. So I go to the ER. Thankfully, they had given me fentanyl, and then they knocked me out to put it back in. Um, and then they sent me on my way and said, go to this orthopedic surgeon. So that was a Wednesday night. Thankfully, I was able to get into the orthopedic surgery on Friday, two days later. And he's like, yeah, he said, you know, with this many dislocations, he said, you're better off to just go in and get it fixed. It's loose. Um, there's definitely going to be damage. You know, he could see on the x-rays, you know, a few things. But um, he said, I'm going to order an arthrogram MRI that will give more details on what's going on and he said I'm going to send you to another orthopedic surgeon who does more shoulder dislocation repair surgeries than I do I'd feel a little bit better if she did it I'm like okay so you know I'm going in to this other doctor with our, the MRI and the all the x-rays and stuff in hand thinking I'm scheduling surgery and she's like no you're Rotator cuff is fine. Yes, you have chronic labral tear. Yes, you have a bank cart something where you, you know, and there was obvious bone bruising because it had just been recently damaged and there's like a chip or some missing on the, um, and the one bone where it keeps slamming out or in or something into the socket. I mean, there's, there's definite damage and it is not a stable shoulder. But she's like, you. I want you to go to physical therapy. She's like, at your age, the chances of it dislocating again, other than a fall, is slim to none. And I'm like, she goes, well, as we get older, we tend to get more stiff. And we're not as flexible. So, 
you know, there's a lot less likelihood that it's going to dislocate. I am extremely flexible. I don't know that at this point I'm necessarily stiff, but I thought, okay, you know, I want another opinion from somebody because I had one doctor telling me yes and one saying no to physical therapy. So I went to a third doctor on Tuesday. He basically kind of agreed with the one that I, I need to try physical therapy, mainly because insurance companies would require it before surgery. But he said, you know, do the physical therapy. He said, come back in, you know, six weeks or whatever. And he said, you know, yeah, if it's, if it's still not stable and you still don't have range of motion or whatever that you want, he said, we can do surgery. And that's originally, and that's also what the other surgeon said. So today I went to physical therapy. It really wasn't that bad. This is just the very beginning kind. You know, thankfully they ice it when they're done. But I did not feel good today. I've been awake since 2. Yesterday when I went to the other surgeon, my blood pressure was 172 over 110. Insane. And my pain was at an 8. And later in the day, it got to a nine. I'm on all these phone calls with my primary doctor and sending messages to my neurologist. I'm trying to, you know, at what point do I have a hypertensive urgency or crisis? When do I need to come in and do something? They were trying to get that. And I'm like, what are we going to do about my pain? Um, my neurologist is on vacation this week. Um, they're trying to tell me that fibro and migraine pain is, even though mine's intractable, my migraines are intractable and I have obviously fibro pain every day, in addition to osteoarthritis and osteoporosis, they're telling me that migraine and fibro pain, it's not recommended to use opioids. Well, I'm finding quite a bit of information contrary to that because my pain is intractable. It's not just acute. It's not even just chronic. It's, it's never ending. So I'm going to see if I can't get my neurologist because she's like, well, you, maybe you need to go to a pain management. I'm like, I go to pain management for injections in my, in my spine. He does have an opioid management program, but I think in order for us to proceed for me getting any sort of pain medication, like a long-acting opioid and maybe some short-acting opioids to deal with breakthrough pain. Um, I think I'm going to need to have my neurologist agree to that. So I don't know. But right now, when you've got pain every day, my pain is at a 7 I'm just, other than getting up and going to a doctor, I, I don't go out. I don't grocery shop. I don't cook. I don't clean. I don't go anywhere. Um, I'm in bed. I do yoga, some yoga poses and stuff in bed, stretching. I had resistance bands that I was doing until I dislocated my shoulder, um, trying to build muscle. I do get up and walk around my house, let, get up and, you know, I gotta let the dogs out several times a day. I get up and go in and get me some water. But I don't actually cook anything. My husband cooks or, you know, I got one daughter that, you know, she'll cook, do you want me to cook you something? But I, I can't even stand in there and do that. Um, the longer I'm up, the more I feel like I'm gonna pass out and my heart rate goes up. So, um, it's pain. It's just all the pain. It just is overwhelming and it just, I can't do anything. And I'm trying to get doctors to realize that when every other treatment that we have tried has failed. I've done Botox. I've done um, Cymbalta, Savella, Nemendia, Inderol, Amitriptyline, Imitrex, Maxalt, so, Zomic, there's so many over the course of 40 years, I couldn't even tell you all of them, but every single one of them have failed. I'm not sure why, um, I'm not sure. The last 
14 years I've um, since I've had Rune Y gastric bypass, um, I don't absorb things very well at all. Like a percentage, uh, I only absorb a percentage of anything that I take in. And then there's some medications and nutrients that I no longer have like the duodenum, the upper part of the small intestine, I no longer have that at all. And I don't have the intrinsic factor in some things in the stomach because I don't have a normal stomach. I have just a little pouch and it doesn't have gastric juices and stuff in it. So I have issues taking medication supplements, eating, you know, and I don't get nutrients. My body just isn't able to absorb it. So that's part of the problem. The other part of the problem is I have always required, like when I go in for surgeries or procedures or something, it always takes more IV medication to knock me out. So I think my body is naturally resistant to medications and maybe it just takes more. I'm not really sure. Um... Because this was long before I was on any prescription medications. You know, I mean, I, I would go in for some procedure. I've had several ear surgeries, um, you know, but at that point wasn't really on any pain medications or any maintenance type medications, you know, um, on a regular basis. So it's not like I was just had overloaded my body with a bunch of medicine. I've tried several things and then I'd go a long time and not take anything um, because it's so frustrating because nothing works. And then I, you know, my migraines are so bad. It's like it, it would just drag me back to, the, to another doctor. But anyway, I'm frustrated. I'm hurting. Um, I need to get this pain under control because it's really really screwing up my blood pressure and that's scary and that makes me feel a different kind of horrible and it just makes my pain worse and then I keep waking up in the middle of the night in pain so it's frustrating and I know a lot of you understand the same things but I'm having to try to really advocate for myself and do so kind of um, precautiously and carefully because I don't want to come across as drug seeking. I am looking for pain medications, which I guess by that very definition would make me drug seeking, but I'm not drug seeking because I'm addicted. I had one doctor before I started going to this neurologist, before I started going to the pain management doctor that I go to, who was prescribing me Vicodin, and I was on it for a year, um, and she was, she was the one that gave me the muscle relaxers, really tried to help. I never was addicted, um, because once I started going to pain management, you know, they stopped prescribing everything, and it was just like a full-on stop. I didn't have any withdrawals. I wasn't addicted. I wasn't selling it. I wasn't snorting it. Um, I had enough pills to last me the entire month. You know, and the few times that I've had um, opioids, like after I've had surgeries, like I've had two ear surgeries, one in 2015, one in 2017. Um, I dislocated my shoulder. They gave me pain medicine and I had a, an abscess tooth and I had to wait like four or five days before my dentist could get me in to get the whole thing done. And I was on um, some pain medication for that. And it works. When I'm on the pain medication, it actually controls all of my pain very well. Um, so I know it works. I just can't. I guess I'm just so paranoid. But... It, it to prescribe it, but I meet the criteria, the medical criteria for intractable pain that would be appropriate for a long-acting opioid with maybe a short-acting opioid of some sort for breakthrough pain. 
I've got several articles that I'm going to send to my neurologist. My primary doctor is just kind of like, talk to your neurologist. You know, he can't help me. He won't help me. So I'm going to have to try to get the neurologist to agree and maybe write some sort of an orders or recommendation to my pain management doctor because I don't think my neurologist wants to get in the middle of, of prescribing opioids either. I think that's the problem. So have her send something to the pain management doctor that it's okay, and then I qualify and see if he'll do it. So I'm just tired and I hurt. I'm trying not to go to the ER. I'm, I'm a little bit better at this moment Otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to record the video. I just can't even pick up the camera most days when I'm in so much pain. It's just like, I can't. So, anyway, that's my update. Ongoing frustration. Doing physical therapy for six weeks on my arm, on my shoulder. We'll see at the end of the six weeks. The therapist told me today, he said, what we're going to do is not going to make your arm stable. He says it might give you a little more range of motion, but it will not stabilize your arm. He said we can't fix that. Okay, so I'll have a decision to make. Do I want to baby it for the rest of my life and hope it doesn't dislocate again? Or do I just want to go in and have a major surgery on my shoulder and fix it? I don't know. So anyway, that's my update. I will talk to you later.